Hello! This video is about complex numbers and the patterns that they make when we use them as a base. Before we start, I want to mention this is inspired by a video on the same topic made by Combo Class, so check that out at the link in the description if you're interested. Also, the visuals in this video come from an interactive tool that I made, so follow that link in the description if you want to play around with it yourself. We'll start off by looking at real bases. So we typically count using base 10. But what does that mean? Well, first, it means that we use 10 different digits. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are the digits we use. And then secondly, it means that placing a 0 at the end of a number means that we're multiplying it by 10. So 70 equals 7 times 10, because we put a 0 at the end of the 7. Similarly, 640 equals 64 times 10. Now, these rules also apply to other bases. Let's take a look at base 2, which is often called binary. So in base 2, we only use two digits, and those are 0 and 1. And here, placing a 0 at the end now means that we multiply by 2 instead of multiplying by 10. So the number 1, 0 means we take 1 and multiply by 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. And then if we take 1, 0 and add an extra 0, that means we again multiply by 2, so 1, 0, 0 equals 4. Now what about complex bases? How do we apply those rules using complex numbers? We can't have a complex amount of digits. That doesn't really make any sense. So just like in base 2, we're going to use two digits, 0 and 1. You could use more if you wanted to, but we will stick with this for simplicity. Now the first rule didn't really work, but we can multiply by the base when placing a 0. Base i doesn't work well, so we'll use base negative 1 plus i. So with the number 1, 0, that means we multiply 1 by the base, which ends up being negative 1 plus i, the base itself. And then for 1, 0, 0, we take the base and multiply it by itself, which ends up being negative 2i. So let's graph these numbers. When we graph a complex number, we use the x-axis for real numbers and the y-axis for imaginary numbers. So at the origin, we have 0, and then if we move right 1, we have 1. And then the base is negative 1 plus i, so we start at 0, we go negative 1 plus i, and that is 1, 0. And if we add 1 to this, we get 1, 1 by moving 1 to the right. And so these four digits make this sort of z pattern. Now 1, 0, 0 was negative 2i. So if we start at the origin and move down 2, this is negative 2i, which is 1, 0, 0. And then we get the other three-digit numbers following a similar pattern, because we just take 1, 0, 0 and add one of the three-digit numbers. And so we can see that same pattern follows if we add the four-digit numbers. We take this shape and kind of copy it upwards into the right. And we can see a similar pattern when we go to 5, and to 6, and to 7, and to 8. And not only is each new set of digits the same shape as all the preceding digits, they fit together really nicely. So we see the upper right side of the blue shape perfectly aligns with the lower left side of the other shape. And this means that if we extend this forever, we will get every complex integer. These numbers are also known as Gaussian integers. All right, so this is great, but what else can we do? Well, right now we're coloring by the number of digits. Could we color differently? What if we color each point by the value of its last digit. We're going to ignore all the digits except for the last one, and if the last one's 0, we color it red, and if it's 1, we color it yellow. And if we do this, we get this interesting checkerboard pattern. Now, why does that happen? Think about that. Why are we getting a checkerboard? And we don't have to color by the last digit. We could pick a different one. So if we color by the second to last, we get these horizontal lines. And then if we move over, we get these diagonal lines, and then one more, these vertical lines that kind of interlock with each other. 
And this follows a pattern. So we had horizontal, diagonal, now we're vertical, and then we get diagonal the other way, and then horizontal again. So this paints a good picture of base negative one plus i. But what about other bases? So on the left here, we have base negative one plus i. And on the right, we have base negative one minus i. And we see they're mirrors of each other. So they're flipped along the x-axis. Why is this happening? Well, this is because in base negative one plus i, we rotate around anti-clockwise. But in negative one minus i, we rotate around clockwise. And so they're the opposite pattern. But we don't have to just look at these two. We could change it to something else, like negative 0.52 minus i, or negative 0.52 plus 0.7i. And in base two, we just get this straight line. Why is that? Well, that's because in base two, we're always gonna get positive real integers. They're never gonna be imaginary. So they all fall on the number line and they're never left of the origin. So that makes sense. Let's hop to the last page to look at some more bases. So here's the good old base negative one plus i. And this is now expanded to show all numbers up to 12 digits. But what if instead we looked at base positive one plus i? Now we get a similar pattern. We still get the copying of the shapes, but it doesn't completely fill the space. There's this gap here, a sort of spiral outwards. And so base one plus i is not going to hit every Gaussian integer. Now we're gonna look at base one half minus root seven over two i, which is approximately negative 1.32. So here we get this interesting pattern, and this one is quite well interlocking. And I really like to look at this one by digit. So let's switch to specific digit. And here we get these diagonal lines. But any digit we look at makes an interesting pattern. So more diagonal lines. If we switch up here, we get these diagonal lines. And now they're getting larger, and they're making more wavy patterns as we go up. How about another base? So this one is zero in the reals, and it's just i over root two, oh, and that's approximately 0.71. And so here we get this grid, but I really like to color this by prime versus composite. And by that I mean if we read the number as if it were base two. And so here, this huge chunk on the left is red, except for that one yellow dot. There's one prime in there. Why is that? Do you have a guess at which prime that is? Well, that one, in fact, is two, it's one zero. And that kind of makes sense. It's kind of an outlier in the primes. And it makes even more sense if we color by the last digit. So here we see everything on the left is red, meaning it's even, and everything on the right is yellow, meaning it's odd. And primes have to be odd. So all the primes, except for two, are on the right. All right, this next base is 0.69 plus 0.69i. But this is really interesting to color by evil versus odious. We get this pattern where they clump together. But what does evil versus odious mean? Well, this applies to binary numbers. So an evil number has an even amount of ones. So here, this number has four ones in it. Well, an odious number has an odd amount of ones. So this has five ones in it. And this evil versus odious actually makes cool patterns in a lot of these bases. Now we'll take a look at 0.31 plus 0.95i. And this makes a bunch of dots. And I like to color this by the distance from the origin, which is often called magnitude. Now coloring by magnitude doesn't really tell us much here, but it's nice to look at, it looks cool. And if we play with these numbers a little bit, if we slightly offset them, then the clumps get bigger and they kind of fan out. I really like this base. Now I've got one final base for you. This is 0.52 minus 0.9i. And this makes this cool hexagonal pattern, which also looks very nice colored by distance from origin. But another coloring system that I like is the angle of rotation. And this is often called the argument. And just like the distance, this doesn't tell us that much, but it looks very nice. And these two coloring systems also kind of reflect back on most of these bases. 
because most of these aren't very useful, they're just fun to play with. But playing with them exposes us to ideas about math and gets us thinking about math, and so we're able to better think about problems that are useful. So give this a try. Play around with the settings and see if you can find a cool pattern. And if you find one that's especially interesting to look at, let me know in the comments.